How's it going, everyone? The OU usage stats just dropped, and it's a good sort of impetus for me to work on this concept I've been thinking about for a while here today. We're going to talk about it in a second, but first things first, we look at these usage stats here, and, you know, there's nothing too surprising. It's really the same 35, 36 Pokemon you'd expect and pretty similar to last month's. A couple of movements up and down the tiers here and there, but generally pretty standard. If there's any surprise among this, it's really just how high the usage stats have gotten for Great Tusk this month. I mean, 57% is unprecedented. You know, it's easier for things to become consolidated because it's a smaller metagame. There's a lot of talk about the Dexit last generation, but this Dexit has been just as severe, if not worse. So we are going to see Pokemon that can kind of consolidate roles like Great Tusk become a little bit heavier in usage as a result. But still, it's a lot. I don't know if Landers ever hit 57% in terms of like the total usage stats like this. It's really a crazy, crazy feat. This uh, tweet by Smogon right now has 77 replies. I'm going to wager sure that like 65 of them are jokes about Great Tusk. Like it's... Everybody is just memeing about Great Tusk right now. I get it. It's it's a big topic. When you talk about OU, it's kind of the face of the tier right now. But I think... Actually, that's not fair. Maybe 35 are, are jokes. I think probably 30 are complaining. I think people do genuinely see this and they go, Oh my God, this Great Tusk is so ridiculous. We're talking about suspect tests here and there. But nobody's even ventured the idea of a Great Tusk suspect test. And I've, you know, gone on record a lot of times talking about how usage stats does not correlate to strength in Pokemon. It's really a different case, you know. If we're about a fighting game, and if we're talking about Street Fighter, the new Street Fighter 6 comes out, if Ryu comes out and has like a whopping 60% usage rate, we're gonna go, okay, yeah, this this character needs to be nerfed. This is outrageous. If uh, Steve ever hit 60% usage in a Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Tournament, yeah, that'd be a huge problem that would require steps by the community to, to deal with but pokemon is a different case and i've tried lots of different methods to explain this over year the years but what i've most settled on is this idea on photoshop here and um it's the idea of an ecosystem in pokemon it's really not so simple as a tier list or a power rankings or a bam 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 people have said before that like tier uh tiering discussions need to be based solely on what they hit in the viability numbers. I've responded to the concept before. I think that's kind of ridiculous because it, it doesn't tell you the whole picture. Um, but, you know, you remember back in uh, elementary school or high school, look at these old ecosystem things and you go, oh, like the the grasshopper eats this and this eats this and the snake and the... Blah, 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 and the other, like, the, here's a swamp which has termite mounds. <laughs> Shit like that. I'm sure most of you guys remember this stuff. And... What I want to do is kind of do a Pokemon version of that for Gen for OU and how this is a more accurate picture of what the metagame looks like and how it all kind of works. So the first thing we have here at the top is going to be Golden Go, which is surprising because you might say, wait a second, shouldn't Great Tusk be the next one? Shouldn't this be like the king of the tier, the king of this ecosystem? And, uh, oh, and actually, hold on. Let me just adjust this a little bit so you guys don't have to see the uh photoshop things so much i don't know if you guys care about my brushes okay so yes so these are the two top dogs regardless of how you put it but you'll also notice i have great tusk here a little bit above golden go and you might say okay but it's got uh, like more than 15 percent higher usage than golden go what's the deal with that first though i want to talk about this idea in pokemon that i think is really interesting which is the idea of if, if something's in, if something's an ou it's for one of two reasons. It is either subjectively good, where it means it's good in relation to everybody else in the tier. So a good example of that would be um, Generation 5, Black and White has tons of dragons in overuse. It's everywhere. There's Garchomp, there's Hydreigon. It's, it's a dragon-centric and a psychic-centric tier. So if you were to have a fairy dark type in that tier, or even if you just threw in like a, a very bad, just regular fairy type, like a aromatisse or even a mid one like Tinkaton this generation, like whatever, it doesn't matter. It would suddenly become immediately extremely good because it's subjectively very good in the context of black and white overused. And uh, the same can be said in this generation for something like Hatterene because Hatterene is a Pokemon that helps uh, in, a, in a metagame where it's very difficult to control hazards. It can uh, control hazards in its own way. Uh, it's typing lets it match up good against the 
primary hazard setters like Great Tusk and Ting Lu and Garganackle. Typing, not so much there, but uh, and it's also interesting because it doesn't just force swaps in a traditional sense. It forces swaps by if I stay in and try to contest this Hatterene on these hazards, it's going to set up and have four calm mines and sweep me with the Terra Stilization Water, whatever, right? So Hatterene is very like, you know, it's a fine Pokemon, but it's never shined in previous generations. But we find itself in it's a very unique meta where it can really uh, like it suits itself to its strengths in this current one. So it's objectively very good. Whereas a Pokemon like um, Roaring Moon, I think it's fair to say it would be considered uh, objectively good instead of subjectively good. It's objectively good. I think the metagame is arguably unforgiving to it where there's Pokemon that are top 10 in usage like Corviknight and Great Tusk and Ting Lu that kind of wall it. And yet it still sees very high usage because like, just look at those stats. Like again, if we're talking about black and white overuse, the thing would be quick ban because it's pretty much like a, a mini Curum or something with a better alternate typing, right? So there's a, there's a difference between the two, right? And that's what would fit Golden Go. Golden Go, it doesn't really matter what its relationship is to other Pokemon in the metagame. Luckily, it does have a fantastic typing and it does have fantastic stats and move pool too, but that doesn't even matter so much. As good as gold and a ghost type Pokemon creates this like unbelievable, unprecedented effect on a metagame where hazards cannot be removed. As long as this guy exists, you cannot remove hazards. And this is especially interesting in a tier where uh, hazard removal has gotten completely gutted and hazard distribution has also become better than ever. Pokemon like Garchomp are getting spikes. There's tons of great stealth rockers. Uh, you have ridiculous Pokemon like Glamora who are just like God's gift to setting hazards. It's incredible. So you again, you have a Pokemon that is uh, just objectively, and actually I, I, I prepared something for this, um, on this document here, if these are all the Pokemon that get rapid spin right here, and the first four are, are pretty decent, but not many of them match up amazingly versus uh, Golden Go here, right? Get, all of them get two it KO'd by a Shadow Ball. Um, actually, this entire list gets two it KO'd by a Shadow Ball. So none of them are swapping into Golden Go and rapid spinning shit away. And anything beyond these top four are like some deeply flawed Pokemon. Like Dawn Fan is in UU right now. Like, Toad Scroll could match up, I guess, against Golden Go. But the point is, if you're trying to get a rapid spin off and you're trying to stop Golden Go from coming in and preventing the rapid spin, that means you're forcing yourself to run something wild like a, I don't know, like a, a Colossal. Are we really gonna run a Colossal just so we can match up well against Golden Go? That's like, um, that's it's insane. And same goes for Brave Bird, or sorry, for uh, Defog. Because if you don't know already, Golden Go's ability uh, all, doesn't just extend to blocking Intimidate and shit like that. It blocks, uh, Defogs. So Defog, um, the main user is still Corviknight, which is great, but Corviknight can't really match up against Golden Go. Its main forms of attacking are Brave Bird and Body Press, which are completely walled. Uh, same goes for Hallucha. Hallucha is, is a funny case. I, the fact that it sees any uses as a defensive mod is hilarious and shows how like warping Golden Go is because it's a weird case. It can use Mold Breaker, which breaks it, and you can still get the Defog off. Sure. But still, like Noivern, Scizor would have been a great candidate before, but it lost Roost. So it's just an offensive Pokemon that can swap in on Golden Go two or three times at best. Talonflame, I guess you could do. Like these are like, again, these are deeply flawed Pokemon that we're trying to make work because the fact is this Golden Go mod is so unbelievably controlling and it just forces Hatchers to stay on the field. It forces, it forces, right? Great Tusk comes in. You know, I, I can list 10 amazing things about Great Tusk off the top of my head. And um, in the exercise I'm about to do, I'll, I can also explain why it, it just matches up well against a lot of Pokemon. The Lander's comparisons are apt, right? But on a basic level, it is the best singular Pokemon for getting hazards off the field against the Golden Go. Because it can come in, it can go for a rapid spin, and if they know that the Golden Go is coming in, they can instead click Knock Off or Earthquake to one hit a KO or two hit KO it. And that, even then though, that's a 50-50, right? Because you could rapid spin on um, the golden go and think that the opponent's staying in or the opponent um, doesn't stay in and you can click, uh, or the opponent does stay in and you can click earthquake and lose your chance to rapid spin. Like it's, even then it's a 50-50, but this is the best chance you have. And so these are like the top dogs. It's the, it is the meta warper and it is the only one who can stop the meta from being warped. Um, pretty long title. It's not as catchy as the Meta Warper, I guess, but like you get the idea. It's it is the it is the anti Meta Warper, and it's still just a really good mod. I don't want to say it's it's only up here because it's an anti Meta mod. That's that's the problem with all this. Is I'm going to be going through this exercise. It's very easy for me to speak in generalizations and 
and platitudes and like, oh, this mod does this. So that's all it's good for. No, it's way more complicated than that. And that, that's as I'm doing this I'm, and I'm criticizing, oh, it's more complicated than, the, than just the power rankings of this. Also, what I'm saying is going to be simplifying it too. That's the nature of this game. Each of these Pokemon is a set of like nine different things of numbers and 20 different moves and typings and all that shit. And there's so much that makes them good or bad, but it's hard for me in the relationships with the other Pokemon. So you multiply that by the other, other Pokemon. There's so much going on, but I'm going to still attempt to create again this, this ecosystem here and show that it's less of a our rankings but it's more about the relationships these pokemon have with each other and how it creates like a fluid metagame um okay so here we go <laughs> you can tell i put some work into this i don't want to spoil it all at once but i would say the third dog here is um well here i'll do this first i'll just i'll move them i'll, I'll ruin my work here these are the top five right now right as i said these are the top two right here and um, these are the top three, the top five, when then you include them all together. And they do all interact with each other. And what's interesting about them all is, again, remember the objectively good versus subjectively good, all these Pokemon are both. Where, again, I can drop Golden Go into any metagame, it's gonna be metagame warping. That's a fact. I can drop Great Tusk too. Again, it's great because it handles this guy so well, but I guarantee you can drop Great Tusk into any metagame and he's still gonna be at least good. That's a fact. Um, same goes for uh, Dragapult. We already said that last generation. It's a really good Pokemon, but in terms of subjectively good, it's good. It, it, it's it's new too because it can Shadow Ball and uh, two KO both of these Pokemon really easily. In terms of what Dragapult is trying to do as a Pokemon, which is offensively sweep and create an offensive pivoting presence, it it's not uh, slowed down by these two at all, which is great. Um, King Gambit is third in the usage stats, and it is interesting because it kind of creates more of a, a triangle with these two where it loses pretty solidly to Great Tusk, if we're being honest. But it's one of the very few Pokemon who can swap in on a Golden Go very freely, because that's the other thing with Golden Go. It's not just a hazard denying force, but it's also pretty much like a like a mini uh, Gengar, I guess. And like offensively, it's kind of a mini Gengar. Worse-ish secondary typing, um, worse-ish move pool, um, definitely worse offensive stats. But it's, it's again, it's got a very Gengar-like presence in terms of its offensive uh, effect on a metagame but it's one of the this this king of is one of the few that can swap in on a golden and go uh there is a focus blast threat of course you can terrestrialize that it can miss because it's low accuracy and if we're being honest i don't have the stats in front of me it's quite low usage focus blast on golden go and they're normally choice locked maybe not normally but they're often choice locked so that you know if you, you can come in on you can chat about one mod and you come in on this guy shit like that uh, and it can, of course, revenge kill it in turn with uh, Kowtow Cleave or more commonly Sucker Punch. Because again, they're often choice locked, so you're forced to do that. So kind of a, a trifecta here where they beat each other. And King Gambit's also one of those mods that's just like ridiculously good and it's objectively good. You can drop it in any metagame and it would put that HP and stats and move pool. It would be really good to begin with as well. And then Iron Valiant is a funny case where I'm... This is, Iron Valley is the reason why I don't want to speak in two broad platitudes at all, because it can be four different things. It can be physical, it can be special, it can be mixed, it can be scarf, it can be specs, it can be booster energy this. Mixed sets are the most common right now, but even then that's only making up 20% of like Iron Valley usage right now. So it's, I don't want to speak too broadly on it, but it can beat Gold and Go depending on its set. It very frequently can beat a, uh, uh, I was about to say Dawn fan, that's the first time I made that mistake in a minute. A great Tusk, uh, depending on the coverage, it can very frequently beat the King Ambits. And if it's running a uh, booster energy speed, it can usually beat this Dragapult here. So they all interact with each other a little bit. So those are the top five. And they own have their own sort of realms. I've been moving these guys around too much. I wanna put them back into their old spots. Oh, perfect. Okay, so yes. So this one is one of the only Pokemon that can wall and kill Golden Go really easily. The other one being Ting Lu. You can see in the middle of my ecosystem, I've also added a Venn diagram because it's not visually complex enough right now. But uh, so yes, it can go there. But Ting Lu is also an interesting spot in this metagame where not only can it beat and revenge kill and all this shit Golden Go, but it loves a Golden Go metagame because guess what? I got Stealth Rocks, I got Spikes, I got Whirlwind, I'm a wall. I love spamming that shit and creating a really hazard spam heavy metagame. Same is true with all these Pokemon. These are great hazard setters who take advantage of it. 
and you know that's a broad stroke to paint them by like you know there's a lot more to gengar or sorry gengar geez uh garchomp and garganackle than their hazard abilities that's like very diminutive but still like in points like if i'm just trying to make a broad stroke of the relationship with it like if i'm trying to create a reason why garchomp still sees 11 percent usage despite you know there being better ground types in the tier right now there being stronger uh dragon types in the tier right now I'm trying to point to a reason than that it's because it's got great hazard spam it can do a little bit of all of them and it's and it's hazard spam is a, is a key part of what makes it still relevant nowadays uh we also have pokemon here who kind of bully uh physical ground types there are still a lot of ground types uh like rotom is going to handle this guy well uh they're both going to handle garchomp well um definite niche and so again if, if if this is the top dog this is the second top dog who, and who is so common because this top dog is so threatening then these guys become very common too as a result unsurprisingly next here we have sort of anti-meta pokemon i don't want to zoom into i don't want to reveal everything yeah i think i'm fine like this uh here we have these anti-meta pokemon uh like hatterene and uh cinderace hatterene is a better example i talked about it before how it matches up well against the ting Lu's and the garchomps and the uh great tusks of the world but also it forces a, a sweeping threat or creates a sweeping threat it's one of the only relevant magic bounce users and again a tier that is completely central on hazards so it's one of the only ways what's the best way to keep hazards from defeating your whole team you don't let them go up in the first place with magic bounce here right uh cinderace is similar in the sense that you can kind of circumvent this whole bullshit of like rapid spin and good as gold and all that stuff by going for court change but it's also anti-meta in the sense that it can match up really well against um golden go with sucker punch and pyro ball um it's pretty cleanly gonna lose against great tusk depending on you know i guess you can do some zed headbutt shit but it's not that's it's more anti-meta specifically against golden go uh these ones are this is again this is a pretty broad stroke there's a lot more of these pokemon than just their relationship and revenge killing the top two it's a pretty you know silly thing to, to dilute them down to but still if we're talking about these pokemon's relationship to the most controlling forces in the meta then yeah they're they're, they're gonna see high usage because depending on what move you click they're often choice locked you can easily revenge kill these two um all of these mons these ones less so i kind of tried to order them in you know order of relevance and strength but yeah, that's part of it as well. And then we can zoom out a little bit here and we have worse Tusk. I'm not gonna break down why Iron Treads is worse than Great Tusk. Like I, I, was, I, I was tempted to do this whole thing of like showing, this is how much work I almost put to this video of, uh, where is it, where is it? Uh, I'm doing this whole thing of going like, here is how Great Tusk matches up against the whole metagame. And then here's how Meowskarada like offensively revenge, like I was trying to do something like that way too much effort to contrast that with worst tusk who <laughs> worst tusk iron treads who is like got a way worse like spread of matchups than uh great tusk does but I, that's not the point of this video so it doesn't need to um you can see these pokemon that don't have lines to it aren't necessarily like have a relationship with these mons i guess great worst tusk should be here-ish kind of feed off of this relationship because it does this but worse but i don't i don't want to give him that space Weather, still relevant. Spore, it's good. Um, doesn't Again, this is one of those things where we talk about subjectively good or subjectively good. And Spore is something that is always going to be like relevant in a tier. It just controls space so well, either defensively in this case, gives you breathing room for your team with a regenerator mon, or in this case, creates really strong offensive pressure. On the right here, I kind of just have these guys who are just doing their own shit here. They're just the really good setup sweepers. Um, these are, again, talking about objectively good versus subjectively good. Dragonite, who can now terrestrialize and have a, you know, a free Dragon Dance, first of all, thanks to multi-scale. And then second of all, become, have a base 80 power plus one stab extreme speed is crazy. So again, it doesn't matter what metagame you put that in, this guy's going to be pretty good. Um, in fact, it's got arguably a bad, subjectively, it's got an arguably bad matchup versus these two, right? Like if it's, depends on if it's running dual wing beat. Um, but it doesn't love fighting against Great Tusk, and it certainly it can run extreme speed, but it doesn't love a ghost type being the big dog in the tier when you're running extreme speed. Um, Volcarona, another Pokemon that is just objectively good before you do any ifs, ands, or buts about it. We had heavy duty boots. We had the you know plurality of options with uh, terrestrialization. It becomes crazy. I talked about Roaring Moon before. I think you know it's not that simple but i don't think roaring moon probably loves this metagame as much as it could certain other ones 
but it's just so good that it's always gonna be relevant anyways. Same goes for a Pokemon with Glaive Rush and Dragon Dance and 130 special attack. Um, Shed Tail, good. Good setup supers right here. And then we have these unaware mons who are just great checks to this sort of section here where that we go, oh my God, they're setup sweeping. They're so strong and so fast. I'm so terrified, please help me. Um, unaware, 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 and haze. So again, kind of a gross oversimplification, I suppose you could say, but I do feel like, I'll zoom in a little bit more in case you guys want to look a little bit closer here. I'll see, I'll just remove myself for a second here. Um, Again, kind of a gross oversimplification of what the metagame really is, but I think it's a more accurate picture than just looking at stats and numbers and saying like, oh, Fall Corona is the eighth best in the tier right now. Why is that? Well, no, because it's kind of, it interacts differently from these ones and you know, Hatterene is just behind it. Like that's the contrast, like Fall Corona and Hatterene are side by side here on the usage stats. They have, they're almost identical in the number of like times they were used this last month, but the reasons couldn't be more different. One is like, completely entrenched in this web of hazard removal slash setup slash putting your own mods at the breathing room was Volcor just like yo terrestrialization is pretty good eh like what if i was just a grass type wouldn't that be crazy wouldn't that be so like wild if i was a grass type right now bro that's what Volcarona brings to the table and people are talking about the stall corner here that's just more reactive uh movement to these pokemon here because you're not like in terms of stall pokemon you're not getting much in terms of like hazards or anything else with these guys it's just a reactive push to these Pokemon right here taking over. And yeah, you know, once again, to reiterate, the reason why I have these numbers and their usage stats attached to the little icons I have here is because I was originally planning to point out all the matchups they have, and I could say something like, ah, the reason why Armor Rouge has uh, a lower percentage number than this Pokemon is because if you look at these arrows, it points out this, and these arrows point out a different picture, but it's gonna take way too much work, and you guys get the point anyways. I'm sure I, you don't need me to explain to you why some Pokemon have lower usage stats than others that fulfill a similar niche. I think the idea is pretty clear. So. Yeah, I guess that's the video. I hope you all enjoyed. Um, I like kind of talking about the metagame at OU because I think it's so interesting to see how you should that shape things and shapes our opinions of it. Um, and I'm hoping to get some good discussion on it beyond just like, oh my God, Great Tusk is crazy, eh? Yeah, he is, but there's more to it than that. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, anyways, hope you all enjoyed. I'll catch you next time. Take it easy.